Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and today I've got another tricky question. This is number 60 in the series. I can't believe I've done so many. Thank you all for your amazing support and all the, uh, you know, the likes and and the uh, and the views and the shares uh, and the subs. It's really inspired me on to do as many of these as I can. I hope you found them useful over your exam period. Um, obviously, this is going to be the last one that I do this academic year, uh, with paper free, literally two days away. Uh, but what I am going to do tomorrow is my first ever live stream. Uh, I'm super excited and also a little bit nervous about it. But um, it's going to be six questions I'm going to do. I'm going to do free stats, free mechanics. Um, and then afterwards, if there are people want me to do more, then I'll just do more. But I've got six planned. Um, and yeah, so check it out it's tomorrow, Wednesday, 6.30. Okay, so um, uh, I had a student request that I do um, a stats question. Um, his name was Paul, and I found this question, and it's all about Paul. So if you're watching Paul, this one's for you. Um, I did kind of tweak it towards the end to make it a little bit trickier. Um, but anyway, hopefully you enjoy it. And then finally, if you've watched my predicted paper free and you found that useful, I do have two more uh, which I did on the weekend in a live session on Zoom. You can check out the recordings, the work solutions, the video solutions, link in the description if you want to get access to that. Okay, right, let's do this. Okay, so this is a normal distribution uh, because it says that uh, it is, uh, well, it's a normal variable. Uh, and we know the standard deviation is 18. Um, so we don't know the mean. So I would start by writing that um, x is normally distributed with a mean unknown but a standard deviation of 18 and we always write the variance in that slot so I'll just square it even though I'm going to be using 18 on my calculator. Okay um, so we need some information to find the mean um, because unless we have a probability then we're a bit stuck but we do and what I always do for a normal distribution question is I'll draw uh, the bell curve like that and this information here says that in three out of four sessions, Paul takes more than 80 minutes. Okay, so I'll draw a line down there um, because three out of four is 75% or 0 0.75 as a decimal. So the area over here looks roughly about 75%. And that would mean that the value for x right there would be 80, such that more than 80, so to the right of 80, gives you an area of 75. Okay, next we need to look at the standardized normal distribution. So whenever we're missing the, uh, the mean or the variance, um, standard deviation, then we're going to need to use this, uh, this uh, normal standardized distribution. Um, so what I do is I go into um, distribution, which is number seven. So you just hit seven on your calculator. And then I'm going to go down to inverse normal. Because inverse normal, gives uh, you can put in the area and it will tell you the, uh, the value for x, or in this case z, because we're using uh, the, the standardized normal. Okay, so this calculator, it only goes uh, less than or equal to when you look at area. So the area is always going to be to the left. So you've got to think about what's the area to the left of the point. And of course that would be 0 0.25. So you put in 0 0.25 and you've got the standard deviation of 1 and the mu of 0. Always just double check that as well because when we write out our distribution, we write it out with the mu first and then the standard deviation afterwards. Whereas in the calculator, it asks for the standard deviation first, then the mu. So just be careful with that. So it is 1 for the standard deviation and 0 for the mu. Uh, again, just like right here, like it's the other way around when you write it out. So just be careful. Okay, great. That's our z value. Uh, so we can say that minus 0 0.6745 um, is our z value. Now the formula to convert z's back into the x distribution is x minus mu over sigma. Okay, so you have to remember that um, uh, formula. Now, the x corresponds to the 80 uh, mark. So we know what the x was um, at that point. It was 80. Uh, and we know what the standard deviation is as well. 
uh, we get given that in the question, that's 18. Um, so we can solve this for, um, uh, for mu. Okay, so what I can do with that is I can press this button here, this STO button, store, um, and then I can press this button above it, um, and that stores it to A, because the button above had a red A um, above um, the, you know, the minus sign, whatever that symbol is. <laughs> okay, uh, so then I could go to uh, number one, which is the, you know, the calculation part of the calculator, and I can press alpha and then press that button again, and that gives me A, and that gives me the number in full. Um, so I'm going to times that by 18. Okay, great. So that gives me uh, that minus you know 12.14 is equal to 80 minus mu. Um, and then doing a little calculation there by swapping over. Um, I'm going to need to move it to the other side. That will turn it positive and then add it to 80. And that's going to give me my value for mu. And that's exact as as exact as you can possibly ask for. Um, though actually the question does ask for the to the nearest minute, so it's just going to be ninety two is the mu value that we're going to use. Okay, lovely. Right next, it says find the probability that one of Paul's sessions lasts more than two hours. Okay, well that is relatively straightforward because that I'm just going to use my calculator with all the um, now that I know the distribution in full, because this mu I now know is 92. So I can just go to normal CD. Again, just hit 7 to go straight to distribution. Don't waste time kind of trying to find it on your calculator. Just learn the numbers. Um, and then normal CD is 2. And I want to have more than 2 hours. So I need the probability that x is greater than... 120. So the lowest it could possibly be is 120. Um, I know some people get a bit confused when you use the normal distribution. You don't use an equal to sign or you don't use greater than or equal to uh, because it's continuous. Having exactly 120 doesn't really have any probability at all. So it doesn't matter about not using the equal to sign or not. Um, so 120 and then the upper bound we just go for a huge number. Um, and then the um, the uh, standard deviation was 18 and mu was uh, 92. Great. Okay, so that gives me 0 0.05991. Perfect. Um, that should be good. Always give probability to three or four significant figures, uh, never fewer than, uh, than, than three significant figures. Okay, so on to part C. Paul trained four times a week and all of his sessions lasted more than 100 minutes. Find the probability that at least one of his sessions last week lasted more than two hours. Okay, so there's two parts to this question. Um, one is the fact that um, he trained four times a week. And that's telling me that I'm going to need to use the binomial. Particularly as it says here, find the probability that at least one of these sessions... Um, so I'm going to need to use the binomial with four number of trials and then to find the probability that one of them gives us this particular success. Now the particular success we're going to need to use the normal to find because the success is that um, uh, they lasted more than two hours given that we lasted more than a hundred uh, minutes. So. I want to find the probability that um, we have lasted more than 120 uh, minutes or two hours given that we know we lasted more than 100 minutes. So that's the probability I need to find first. So the way you do conditional probability is on top of the fraction we need to find the probability of these two things both occurring, the intersection between them, the both of them. And how can you be greater than 120 and greater than 100? Well, you just have to be greater than 120. That is the intersection between the two of them. And then that's over the probability of what's given, which is greater than 100. So again, that's just me using the formula that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B. 
the classic conditional probability formula. Okay, um, so we already have uh, the, the top of this fraction, um, which is good. So we just need to find the probability of greater than 100. Um, so I'm going to keep this in my calculator. So once again, I'm going to store it to um, A. Um, and then I'm going to go uh, back and I'm going to go greater than 100 this time. Uh, yes. And then I'm going to store that one to B. So I press store B. Brilliant. Uh, so that number was 0 0.3284. Okay, great. So now what I could do uh, is I can go back and I can just do A over B. And that's just going to give me the answer to this, which is 0 0.1824. Uh, okay, lovely. Right, let me just grab some more space. Okay, so now that is the probability of us getting one success. But Paul has trained four times. And success, in this case, has a probability of 0 0.1824 for each individual session. So I want this, uh, the probability of at least one. Now, whenever you see that, the probability of at least one, which is the probability that x is greater than or equal to one, you just think to yourself, that's one minus the probability of none. So at least one means one minus none. That's how I remember it, because sometimes it can get quite confusing in an exam as well when they use different terminology like more than this or fewer than that. Um, but if you see at least one, you just think one minus none. Bosh. Okay, so I will need to go into the binomial. Uh, so again, number seven, and then binomial, you have to go down and then click on uh, one because you want binomial uh, CD. Um, well, in fact, all PD is fine, actually, because all you're working out here is, is the probability of none. Uh, anyway, variable. So I'm going to go with um, X is zero. And we've got four number of trials, and the probability is 0 0.1824, just like that. Okay, great. So that gives me this. Again, I'm going to use that store button, store it to A, and I'm going to go back to number one, and I'm going to do one minus the uh, answer, not the answer, sorry, <laughs> that would not be correct. Uh, one minus A, perfect. Okay, great. So that gives me the probability that I'm looking for. And that is a wrap. Right, hope you enjoyed that and uh, wishing you all the best for your exam on Thursday. Do come and um, check out my live session, um, my live stream, sorry, uh, tomorrow. And also, if you want to have a look at the resources that I made for my live session last weekend, then you can do that link in the description. Okay, bye for now.